business trip. Oh, the people who were wrong. It does tingle a little bit. All right, so it is top three time. If you're new to top threes, welcome. This is a pretty cool show. Definitely hit that like, subscribe button. Um, we are going to randomly draw a category tonight, and in 20 seconds, we are going to come up with our top three answers to whatever category we pull out of here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull one out, and it is going to be number four. Number four. I'm scared. Favorite food and wine festival booths. Oh my god, this is impossible. <laughs> you have 20 seconds starting now. Do you want to go to Disney? Contact me at Princess of the Mouse Travel, and I'd love to work with you on your amazing itineraries. <laughs> You can contact Princesses in the Mouse Disney Travel on Facebook at P-A-T-M Disney Travel. All right. Um, that's it? Yeah, you get 20 seconds. <laughs> okay, that was 18 and a half seconds. I'm sorry. But I talked a little bit before we went into it. So with the, the Halloween ad is only 18 and a half seconds long. All right, I'm going first. Okay. I have seven written down, so if you take some of mine, it's fine. <laughs> I'm not joking. Okay. I'm not joking. Uh, all right. So, first one, food and wine, we said, right? Food and wine. All right. So, uh, I was, I was like, where, where are you going? Uh, <laughs> oh, I love food. <laughs> oh, you want to go with flavors from fire? Okay. Here's why flavors from fire is incredibly great. So first of all, where is it located? It's located by the little playground outside of the um, outside of the shop, outside of Creations, towards Test Track. Why Flavors from Fire is fantastic is it's got meat, which is always good stuff. Um, they normally have a dessert, and then a lot of times what they do is they change the menu up throughout the festival, which is great, um, especially if you can kind of hit it in a transitional period where maybe you get one menu one day, go back three, four, five days later, and you get a different menu the next day. So flavors from fire, um, really, really top notch. You're going to get like filet bites and there's going to be cheesecakes and just all sorts of good stuff at flavors from fire. So I'm going with that one. All right. My number, one. My number, my, my number, my number three, three is going to be the one out in front of the Mexico pavilion. So it's, uh, I don't even think it has a name. I think it's just Mexico, honestly. And across the bridge. Yeah, yeah. It's called Mexico. Yep. Yeah, it's it's the little tapas one, and it's got little tostadas that are really good. Um, you can also get margaritas there. Great little place. Great thing about food and wine, and I'm gonna hit two things here just real quick on food and wine. Smaller plates, smaller menu um, items, so you can get multiple of them, and normally they're not super expensive, like seven to thirteen dollars per item. So it really makes it to where you can, you know, eat around the world and get a lot of different things as you kind of snack through these festivals. Um, when dining plans come back, one snack point for each item as well, which is a huge deal. Except for alcoholic, because it's always non-alcoholic stuff. So, we'll pass that. No, my number three is Mexico. Let's go to number two. Are we allowed to choose brick and mortar spots that do things for the festival or yes you have to pick one of those little like the outer stands no you can you can do the brick and mortars ah uh, I, I take back flavors from fire then. okay so my <laughs> number three <laughs> we're on number two now so this is your number two no i was doing my number three see because you went first <laughs> i'm not editing it out <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm not you know uh, all right, it's fine. I just uh, I have so many amazing things that I want to say. All right, we're going to go number two. Uh, okay, uh, number two, we are going to go with the Appleseed Orchard. Okay. So Appleseed Orchard is where they normally do the O Canada video in Canada. 
if you go to towards La Cellier down that little path off to the right, kind of in the back corner of Canada, um, follow that around and you're going to find Appleseed Orchard. And here's why I love Appleseed Orchard. I like cider. They have cider. <laughs> um, in addition to cider, they always have a really, really good um, apple slushy drink where they, it tastes like apple pie. It's like an apple slushy drink and then they put graham cracker crumbles on top of it and some marshmallows and it is just absolutely fantastic. Um, they normally have like apple tarts and then they normally have like apple beers as well. Things that are like fall flavored and fall inspired, maybe some cinnamons or some nutmegs or some apples into some like lagers and ales and stuff like that. And so apple seed orchard, I 100% guarantee will be on my stopping list when I go for food and wine festival every year. There you go. My number two, I'm trying to find it because I want to say it is, it's over by the United Kingdom, but it's not the United Kingdom. It might be the Belgium one. Oh yeah. Sometimes it's called Belgium and sometimes it's called Cider House. Yeah. And, no, and it's called, it's called Belgium during food and wine. It's called Cider House during flower and garden. So yeah. So Belgium is great. Wait, and, the waffles. Yeah, it, the the little waffles. And oh, then you've got that is so. This year they moved that to over by Brazil, in between the in between France and Morocco. Okay. Yeah. 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 You so, want little waffles? Yeah. So it's got little waffles. It's got the braised beef, um, but it's also got really good beer. So it's usually got a fruit ale there, um, and a lot of good beers to taste. So. You know, it's got a wit this year. It's got an Abbey Ale. It's got a red fruit ale. It's got a chilled coffee with Godiver chocolate liqueur. And it's then you've got a beer flight at it this year. So really good, like sweet. And then your savory beer is some sweeter beers as well. So really cool place there, um, Belgium. And like Peter said, between France and Morocco <laughs> this year. Um Ireland is the one right by Great Britain. Okay, okay. That that's And that'll have like bangers and ciders and stuff like that. Yeah. Alright. So let's go to our number ones. What is your number one? You got a list. I probably haven't hit either any of them yet, so. You haven't. I have a, I have a completely separate list. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Peter's number one will not be heard tonight. That's right, because I want to cheat and do like eight. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to go. My number one for Food and Wine Festival is actually right next to where that Belgium stand is, just to the left. You're going to, in Morocco, find Tangerine Cafe. And Tangerine Cafe is normally a quick service throughout the year, but during food and wine, they shut it down and they turn it into a food and wine pavilion. Tangerine Cafe always has incredibly flavorful, delicious, but also unique things that you're not going to find anywhere else. So like, for example, this year they had a pomegranate cider, they had a fig cider, they had a, a lamb with couscous that was really just fantastic um, because they put those like Middle Eastern types of spices on it. So you get some really, really unique flavors that you're not going to get anywhere else in the festival. And it is, it is a hidden gem because in order to get into it, you have to know that you're going to go to it mm -hmm. because otherwise you'll just be walking down the midway. You'll see the beautiful tiles and beautiful Moroccan buildings. And you'll just keep walking. And the next thing you know, you'll see Belgium and then Brazil, and then be heading into France. You have to know that you're going to go to the Tangerine Cafe, because otherwise you'll just be like, oh, it's a quick service location. It's not right now, and it is totally <laughs> worth Anything that you buy from that menu is absolutely wonderful. Um, that's it. All right, my number one is the Canada Stand. Um, and it is one, right. yeah, yeah. It, you know, it, it might be a boring one, but you get oh, you get La Cellier steak in that stand at nine bucks a plate with a mushroom sauce 
it's it's really good really good and i mean if you have some picky eaters it's a stand that you can get away with getting them something that they'll eat but still keeping it within the in the stands and not getting like chicken fingers or something like that from a quick service somewhere else so really really good place there you can find it in front of the canada pavilion it is the wrong way to go around world showcase but <laughs> I disagree. I always head for Canada. <laughs> You're a against the uh, against the crowd type of person, but no, I mean I, I think food and wine offers just so many different options, and you're not going to unless you have multiple days there in one trip. You're not going to get the full scope of food and wine in in one trip. You're right. Like that is something to be said for sure to everybody thinking about food and wine, you will not, if you expect to go into Epcot, ride rides and do the festival, you won't, you won't, you won't. Um, because you're gonna spend the time waiting in rides, you're, you're just not. If you do, it's gonna be like, okay, we have an hour and a half to walk our way around the showcase. And that's just not the right way to do it. The right way to do it is Go grab some stuff in that entry area and then pull up a table and eat some food in between Port of Entry in Mexico or Port of Entry in Canada and pull up a table and eat a little bit of food. And then again, I go that way. So in between, then stop into the apple seed orchard and sit down for like 30 minutes and have some stuff. And then head up to Ireland and grab something at the pub or Ireland as you head your way into France and and grab France, Brazil, and Belgium, and Morocco, and kind of put all those onto a table and just have some bites. And like right there, just what I said, takes two hours. Easily. Yeah. Easily. And probably closer to like two and a half to three. A lot of times at night, especially during the week, you have a lot of locals coming into the park just for food and wine. And, and those crowds are back at the stands and not necessarily at the ride. So you really have to set up your day really well, knowing when you're there, when the crowd's gonna pick up and when you should kind of attack some of those stands versus riding some rides. So yeah, really, really have to, uh, really have to think about that one for food and wine. Well, yeah, Peter. I, man, I had some other ones. I wish I didn't have flavors from fire. Oh. Hey, th throw out some, throw out some extra credit. Oh, extra credit? Oh Go for God. it. So many. Um, Brazil has an amazing cheese bread. France has the Levian Rose Martin, um, slushy that is fantastic, along with some really delicious food. Mac and Eats is always a favorite because they'll do a cowboy one with chili on it. They'll do one with beef on it, and they'll do a trans, uh, traditional. Fantastic stands at Food and Wine Festival. Those are Peter's bonus three. Peter, where can people find you? Uh, Facebook's the easiest way. If you type in Princess in the Mouse Disney Travel, you'll find me really quick. Send me a message in Messenger. I'll respond just as quickly. Sometimes it's Matt. That's the truth. That's the, <laughs> that's the secret about it. Matt is LinkedIn as well. So um, one of us will get back to you right away uh, and just kind of start that contact. And then from there, we'll exchange some cell phone numbers. We'll, we'll get a meeting scheduled. If you are local to Indy, happy to buy you a coffee and uh, sit down and chat with you someday about all of your uh, Disney dreams that I can make a reality for you. There you go. And don't forget, like, subscribe. And if you have any ideas, go to the website, patm.wixsite.com, patmdisneytravel.wixsite.com, and oh. check out the uh, little questionnaire up in the top right corner, and you can submit your top three ideas. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight for top threes. All well, right. we're on it real quick. Um, yeah. This is the glass that you get for the Remy scavenger hunt this year. This is one of the four options. Oh, there you go. There you go. Awesome. So, okay, let's do this in, in two minutes and 30 seconds, or am I starting and stopping and starting? Uh, might want to stop and start. Let me get out of this real quick. Hey, thanks for checking us out today. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons to help out the channel. Also, if you're looking for some more Disney content, check this out. I think you're going to like it.